Hi guys, so I was about to film um, this video on my Walmart beauty box and as I was about to start, I got this alarm on my phone. This alert. It says ballistic missile and in threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. So I ran upstairs screaming for Jody to get up because he was still in bed and he went and checked his phone and he had the same alert. So what we did is we grabbed Roscoe, we grabbed water, um, we got, grabbed our chargers and our phone and we jumped in the car and we went <clears throat> to this place that we know that it's um, that is a safe place um, versus our house which is just a wooden house. Um, it's a concrete building. So we went there and <clears throat> we waited and waited and, you know, we were looking online to find out any kind of information about this. <sighs> Sorry. About this alert. <clears throat> and there is no information online whatsoever. Nothing at all. So we're like in limbo wondering what's going on. Meanwhile, we're calling all our loved ones to let them know. You now, call my mom to make sure where, where she was and let her know. She said she got the alert, so she was uh, seeking shelter also. I was trying to get in touch with my son who lives on, on Oahu. Got in touch with him. He was on the bus. And he didn't hear anything about it. So I told him... <clears throat> Um, that he needed to find shelter and he said he was almost at to his destination which is Ala Moana that's where he works so he's gonna get there and find shelter there so I hung up and in the meantime you know I call he calls me back and he's he's I can hear people around him in panic and I'm asking him what's going on he said that the bus driver just struck them off The bus driver dropped everybody on the bus on the side of the road by the capital. Now, nobody knows what going, is going on. My son knows because I called him and let him know. But he is in a panic because he doesn't know where to go. So I told him this just to find a building. If you could find any doors that are open to just go in. Um, if there's no doors that are, <coughs> are open, just stay by the building and um, just don't stay out in the open. So in the meantime, I'm looking on my, I'm, I hung up with him. I'm on my phone trying to find out what's going on because from the time that we got the warning to the time we got there, it was past 20 minutes and we were always told we had 20 minutes. If any kind of missile was coming from, from Korea, that we had 20 minutes. So there's nothing on the phone, there's nothing on the news or anything, nothing from the civil defense saying that this was just, this was a mistake. Um, and I just happened to punch in um, missile attack on Hawaii and then Chelsea Gab Gabbard, um, her Twitter thing came up and said that it was, let me see if I can find it. It says, Telsey Gabbard, Hawaii, this is a false alarm. There is no incoming missile to Hawaii. I have confirmed with officials there is no incoming missiles. So, you know, we're, we're kind of like, okay, it looks like it's her, her Twitter, but who knows? We, we don't know. So we just wait and wait. We're, we're looking again on the media, on our phones to see if anything comes up. Nothing comes up. So then in the meantime, Jody's mom calls us and because she's still at home. Um, and they're saying that um, that on the TV across the screen, it says um, that uh, it was a false alarm. So I call my son and I let him know. And of course, he's still panicking because he's not sure if, if it really was a false alarm. Okay, so now he's trying to get to get to another bus because he needs to get to work. So that's fine. Um, we get, we get back home and only about, I would say maybe about, mm, let me look at this. 
half an hour ago, it says, there is no missile threat or danger to the state of Hawaii. Repeat, false alarm. So it took them over, I would say over an hour to let us know that this was a false alarm, that this is an official saying that it's a false alarm. In the meantime, people are panicking. I was panicking. My son was panicking. I'm sure there was a lot of other people panicking. Our civil defense has been having so much problems with the warning system, the alarms that the monthly testing that they do. Sometimes it just goes off in the middle of the night in different places. They need to get it together. Yes, this has opened my eyes a little bit more. I, we already had a plan of where we would go, but we didn't have our supplies or anything in order. We're now gonna get that together. And I think everybody needs to get that together. So sorry that I'm really emotional about this, but I was really scared. And they need to let people know if this is a false alarm immediately, sooner than an hour later that this was a false alarm. So and everybody, anybody from Hawaii watching this video, get your stuff together, have a plan. Um, like I told my son that he needs to, because he rides the bus to, to work, that he needs to, um, on his way to work, find different spots where you know, along the way, let's say something like this happens and it's actually the real deal that he, you know, he needs to get off the bus and figure out where he's going to go, um, you know, find a concrete building, whatever, seek shelter. But yeah, I, I just, I'm really upset because I think the civil, civil defense needs to really up their game and figure their system out. This is really, really serious. So I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna go off this video right now, compose myself, and I'm gonna come back and do another video on my beauty box that I finally got in, okay? See you guys in a little bit. Uh, with that, we open it up to your questions. Governor, never say never. Uh, in a day of technology where you can do it live, why rely on canned audio notifications? You know, I think we uh, have a combination. The notification process is uh, a variety of different mechanisms. We have the sirens. You know, we have uh, cell phones today. We have uh, internet and social media uh, mechanisms. We do know that we need to be able to broadcast messages across all platforms. Uh, and certainly that's what the intention was. Um, you know, there was no automated way to send a false alarm um, cancellation uh, we had to initiate a uh, manual process uh, and that um, was why it took a while to to notify everyone so is there a way to connect it to what you have when you have such things as nixon alerts where it could come out that fast much faster wouldn't that be a better option well certainly we will be looking at we've already implemented some actions to speed the process so that um, the public would be notified faster but we are evaluating uh, all of the processes that we currently have to ensure that we can provide the um, notice to the public as soon as possible so to clarify, the 38 minutes that transpired between the initial alert going out and the false alarm notification was the result of the time that you guys needed to manually take control no. of the system? No. Well, it's a couple things. If, if you look at the timeline, certainly we had sent notification uh, that it was a false alarm much earlier than the 38 minutes. Right. The 38-minute interval is really the interval that we had to manually go through the process to provide uh, notification on the smartphones and cell phones. Um, we did have other notification that occurred much, much sooner than that. Right, on but Twitter and on Facebook, but not everyone is plugged into these social media platforms. Right. They rely on these mass notifications via mobile devices or the sirens, which in some cases did go off in certain communities. 
Yes, the sirens was uh, separate, and a few of them went off, but uh, most of them did not because they're not involved with this um, test. So the, cl the clarification then is why were those sirens triggered? when you guys were already issuing a correction that it was a false alarm. Well, we have to check on that. That's why we do the monthly test. But the, the, the drill that was done this morning was only for the emergency alert system, which is a TV radio, and then the, the wireless emergency alert system, which is your cell phones. Is the real alert supposed to work then where you, you would get this notification, and then are the sirens supposed to go that, after that's that? That's correct. But because this is an internal test or drill, we don't want the, the sirens to go off publicly. So why did the sirens go we off? We have to review that. We have to test. But again, it's an internal drill, so the sirens are not supposed to go off outside. This is just to make sure the warning point personnel know exactly what process to, to follow to initiate if this was a real event. And if there's a, a situation you're saying it was the wrong button was pushed, yes. I guess give us a little clear. So there are buttons on a panel. It one is, person pushes a certain button, and there's no uh, uh, sort of a a safety guard where they say, are you sure you want to push that button? There, there is, it's a screen. It's more like a, a mouse click. It is a screen, a test button, and, and an actual. Okay, the wrong button was passed. But was once pushed. that button is pushed, that's it. It goes that's through. It. That's correct. There's no sort of redundancy was, whatsoever. I was going to say that the, the old process was no redundancy. We've implemented changes already to assure that it becomes a redundant process so that it won't be a single individual. There'll be at, at least two people that would be uh, involved to to in initiate the alert. You mean since this morning you've implemented that? Yes, process. that's correct. So to clarify, with a mouse click, someone sent out this mass alert saying that this is not a drill, shelter in place immediately. And by the time the next alert went out to the masses and those 38 minutes has passed, you guys had obviously already clarified that it was a false alarm. Yes. But that's there were correct. still sirens that had started going off, and you're saying that that's on a separate system. So who made the call to initiate or authorize the use of the sirens? No one had authorized the use of the sirens. So, so the sirens should not, and we don't know, but we will find out. What is the procedure? Can you walk us through the steps of what is the procedure when you're testing? Well, the, the procedure for the test is that in a real event, we would get notification from your specific command. And then we'll go to the test as far as uh, activating the, the computer screen and the program as far as that would activate the, the warnings and the alerts. So the process, process of our test is that we simulate a notification from PACOM. Now, again, no notification from PACOM came. We simulate that. And based on that simulation, uh, our staff at the state warning point We'll open up the screen, go through the checklist, and then make that initiation. That's what. There, there, oh, there, there is a. Again, it's a human error. There is there is a screen that says, "Are you are you sure you want to do this?" Okay. Again, that's already in place. Now we had one person human error, and that thing was was pushed anyway. So, so, there, uh, so, there so was, they not only by triggered having, the alert, redundancy. they also pressed yes. Yes. There was a two-step process. Yeah, there is a press yes in both situations. Right. So by, by having redundancy, having two people, you've got 12 to 13 minutes to alert the public. How much of a delay will this be? This, this, there would be no delay in this case. We would have said, right now, the process that the process would be the OTS or the person in charge of the warning point and that shift would be the one to either push it or oversee to make sure that there's two people there when you push the button. Did I'm you sorry, get an explanation? There was then? a redundancy in place then. Someone clicks to send out this mass message, yes. and then someone also clicked to say yes. It's the same. Happened. It's the same person. Did he explain why? Then he, he did I, it twice. I, I can't explain that. That's like I said. It's a human error that we're going to fix. We understand it's a mistake, but what are the consequences as the result of the kind of just mass hysteria and confusion that was launched this morning as a result of the human error? What's the consequence? The consequence of this is obviously bad. Uh, I'm working on credibility now because we've worked so hard to get this in place. That's why I want to tell the public right now is, again, this was a mistake on our part. But don't let that stop as far as the preparation and the warning time if this happens for real. So in, in my case, you know, you watch the news right now. They're talking. Kim Jong Un is talking to the South, so the, the tensions are going, are getting better. So when I heard this this morning, I thought this has got to be a false alarm because that's not happening. And our outreach to the public and our training is again keep it keep informed of what's going on 
in the in the, the tension between the two countries and keep uh, monitor uh, that. So again, when I saw this today, when I heard this today, I thought something was wrong. It was a false alarm, mainly because the tensions were not there to to start something like this. Again, that that's again, we should this should not have happened, and we're going to work hard to make sure we, this is not going to happen again, as the governor said. And we're going to work with the cancellation process and the notification process to be much better so this doesn't go through what we went through this morning.